Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, after this talk, I've realized that I'm turning into a one <laughs> <laughs> and taking me away from nothingness. I'm drifting away from this path. What is your advice for me to get back to this oh, path? No one. <laughs> There'll be no one. That's why it's, that's the whole, the whole process is be no one. Listen to the teachings and every day Allah just sends a test, be nothing, be no one, don't respond, don't, don't talk back, don't answer, just submit to be nothing, to be nothing, to be nothing and cry unto your Lord and say, Ya Rabbi I want to be nothing, ana abdukul ajisu, da'ifu, miskeen, zalimu, jahal, I'm nothing, nasiyan mansiyah. Like Sayyidina Maryam we described in Surah 19, describes, oh I wish that I was non-existent, nasiyan mansiyah. I'm nothing, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing. And after Ramadan people email, oh Ramadan's over and I don't feel any energy, I feel tired, I go, yeah that's good alhamdulillah, that's the nukht in which you feel completely annihilated. And that's the time in which to continue struggling, continue giving, continue praying, continue doing all these things because Allah's taking that nukht towards the throne to be dressed by the one because everyone's now beautifully cleaned because of fasting. And as a result Allah is drawing their souls into His Divinely Presence. SubhanaHu man dul arshi amma yasifoon Ya Rabbi that I'm nothing, I'm nothing. It's the great reset that Ya Rabbi on this pilgrimage that's coming now towards the twelfth month, this month I'm asking to be dressed with these lights and these powers from Your throne and I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And then remind myself at work, family, everywhere I'm nothing and try to keep patience. If you can't control the mouth, put a lollipop and remind yourself, control your mouth, control the character inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi in this sawbah you mentioned that the Dajjal is the one taking over us if we are moving towards one. After I was vaccinated I have a great difficulty in controlling my bad character. It's become wild, what should I do? Mm. InshaAllah, increase your salawats, increase all the, the different uh, programs we have for energy, make sure you keep your wudu, make sure you keep your ta'weez, make sure you, you, you keep the ta'weez within the khum and, and keep praying to Allah that if there was anything bad in that shot to take it away and that you, ha you were forced to do it under oppression. And we gave the du'a in the fajr, the fajr du'a that in the qunut of Imam Shafi describes that I have been oppressed. I think we have even a video on, on that du'a, they keep reciting that du'a in the fajr and at that fajr time asking, Ya Rabbi by the barakah of this du'a I was forced by this oppression to take this, whatever it is within me to destroy that, destroy whatever element they put in, whatever nanotechnology they put, whatever it is Allah destroy it. So that's something that you know we have to understand. But most likely it has an effect on character, especially the ones that are RNA and M mRNA. The ones that are dealing with DNA means they're entering into Allah's kitab and that's, that's something very dangerous. <coughs> InshaAllah keep praying and uh, ask that Allah to destroy whatever element is in those things and to, to make the person to be safe, InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. During the meditation when our thoughts are drifting towards dunya is that considered also entering into the ocean of one? No that just shows you how difficult meditation is. If it's something easy you think everybody would be doing it. It's actually the most advanced sta stages of, of tariqah that were not taught until the end when they've perfected. But because there's no time they took the last chapter and brought it first. And the shaykhs on, behind the scenes are fixing everything so that people can achieve that. So it was the last chapter, remember we described on our last episode that came out, that's the end game. The end game was tafakkur. So you studied all of the ulums of tariqah but the end is you would sit with the shaykh and he would begin to teach you the secret of tafakkur so that you could keep that connection with them wherever you were in life. But now there's no time so they brought the last chapter and brought it first. So please you study this, do like this, do like this 
It's not something easy at all. As soon as you do like that, very satanic things are going to begin to happen. The shaitans are going to come and send every type of graphic image, inappropriate image. You read Dalal al Khairat, you'll be attacked with horrific thoughts, horrific sort of uh, uh, energies because shaitan is trying to throw everything he has at the servant, stop what you're doing from this world of light. So any type of badness, read Dalal al Khairat, do your meditation, do your salawats, lots of salawats. In thousands, in thousands and you're fighting, this is a battle. It wasn't, you know, you're going to run across the, the, the finish line and, and somebody going to give you a trophy, you're, you're going to fight to your death to get through that finish line. So then watch the Lord of the Rings, all these orcs and these creatures that are coming, horrific looking creatures, oh they're all, all like that in the spiritual world though, they look worse than that. And they're coming all over you, all day and night, all day and night. You think they're like, oh please enter to paradise, O servant of Allah No, they're coming to destroy and to, to obliterate everything. So every practice we're doing, you have your ta'weez, you're doing your zikr, you have your, all, all your fortified, you're doing all your practices and you try your best and this is a, a fight to the end. This is a fight in which you have to fight uh, against the unseen forces. Keep the connection, meditate, ask for salawats, keep yourself in the presence of Prophet and all of these, these uh, issues inshaAllah and then they become stronger and stronger with the connection to the shaykhs and that fires begins to enter. Those whom are suffering from too much attacks when they try to meditate, again you wear your taweez, keep your wudu, read the madad before you do any practices asking for the, the shaykhs and you read it out loud. So that the madad of the shaykhs are, are amongst you and around you and uh, alhamdulillah and you keep doing the practices, play the salawats in the house, burn isfan for these energies, they can't breathe that fragrance, they, they get very disturbed by it. So these are you know all the realities and the, the armament of keeping our way, inshaAllah. Mm. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. If we make ourselves zero, not one, how do we know what's right and wrong? Can we fall into a trap of shaitan that makes us feel we don't know anything or are doing wrong constantly but aren't? No, I don't think you understood the concept. How becoming nothing means you don't know anything. I don't understand the, the, that this not knowing nothing where you say, I don't want to read anymore and I want to be illiterate, that's not the concept of nothingness. The concept of nothingness is that every time you want to talk, don't talk. Every time you want to argue, don't argue. Every time uh, you, you think you have to defend something or getting angry, you know what one is. One is when you want to be proud of yourself and, and, and show yourself and talk about uh, this and defend yourself. Those are all the actions of one. This has nothing to do with illuminating yourself, we're teaching knowledge all day long. That's not it at all. It's about read everything, be knowledgeable in the way of Allah meditate, contemplate. But as soon as you face the dunya, don't try to show yourself. Don't, don't, don't get pages and post uh, everything that you do and don't, don't give fatwas online. So many uh, women are making fatwas online and, and copy pasting to, to other people and trying to show like they're an alim, be nothing, be nothing. So these are you know bizarre behaviors in last days and character of people that were always very quiet all of a sudden they copy and post and try to be a, a shaykha or a shaykh, don't, don't do that. So that has nothing to do with uh, seeking knowledge and, and talking uh, from an illiterate, illiterate standpoint, no not at all. We're very literate and the shaykhs are filled with knowledges. So when we negate ourselves in the physical world, Allah dresses qudra and power. And what we want is Allah's qudra. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. If we know there is a big hammer coming towards us as a consequence of past actions and bad reactions, mm. taking our right <coughs> and being a one, is negating ourselves most important to facing our destiny? Yeah, if you know you've done wrong and you know that you, you, you have a character in which Allah was, is going to, to punish, 
Alhamdulillah Allah Zawajal guided us to the tariqahs, it can't be that bad we're sitting in zikr. But if you're continuously doing very bad things then you make your istighfar, you give your zakat and sadaqah, you make your salawat, you, you do every practice that you can to draw close to the reality of Prophet and inshaAllah and read the Lara Khirat so that we stop all the bad actions and then Allah lessen it and maybe then the, the difficulty comes as something minor. And you know sadaqah take away many, many difficulties. So even sadaqah every day to take away a difficulty, you don't know what calamity is coming when you walk out your door. So even just giving a small amount on a daily basis takes away many difficulties. If people know they've done something wrong then you pay reparations, right? So if you go to a court and you know you did something wrong against somebody, you know the judge is going to give you a hefty penalty. You did like that? You destroyed the guy's store? Okay, you owe this. Well Allah would just say, if you know that then pay your own reparations. So that's the concept of sadaqah is I'm paying something for all the things I've done wrong, known and unknown to me. So then that's the system in which Allah gave to us and make your istighfar, salawats and all the good practices inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Does commenting on the Sohbah video about what we understood have any effect on our binary code? Con commenting on the thing if you want to brag, yes, because then you're going to the one. But commenting from what we asked is that, please, mashallah, great, thank you so much and this is what I heard from the talk that you talked about like a summary, that's not a problem. But giving your tafsir, that's a problem because now you're a one. So you're not going to give a tafsir like, oh this the reality of this what the shaykh talked about. Just comment on what you think you heard like a synopsis. So when we would go to school they would give a lecture and they say, everybody hand in now a synopsis of what the lecture was about. Not the philosophy above the lecturer saying, I know where you were going to with this. This is now the formula of the universe being solved and then to outdo the professor. So we've all done this in school, it's not something ajeeb. So you listen to something and you put the two or three bullet points of what I understood from this, mashaAllah, thank you and we love you and boom, it's finished. Those demographics enter into YouTube because YouTube's looking, oh look, his people have a lot of interaction with content then they begin to serve it in other places. And two, we said that anything that we do in that way it counts as a khidmat and it brings a rahmah and a mercy when we do these good actions. But we can turn an action from being good to bad when we start to, you know, try to show ourselves. That's why also in the questions try to ask what we talked about. Don't let your ego get involved and say, you know, a secret of the universe that you think you know you want to reveal it on questions so everybody will be impressed that you asked that question. That's a one. So to be a nothing is that I will, from what I heard I will need more understanding from this one and then alhamdulillah that, that's how the system works. And then we begin to meditate and contemplate on this understanding of, of am I showing myself or am I sort of being a nothing and, and, and sort of lending support to the process. It's important to get the feedback on the questions because the shaykh likes to understand what the students are, are sort of acknowledging from the talks, that they're active in it, they're participating and each person to feel that they are participating and they're a part of this family. We spend 30 days in Ramadan with each other so we're all in it. So it, it gives everybody a feeling of participation. There are very lonely people who think they're all alone and that nobody knows them and they're going to be just alone. That's not true. So that's the whole system of this is participate, be active and feel that you're a part of it so that something very distant becomes very close for you. That you feel that, no, no, the shaykh is hearing me, the shaykh is understanding, I'm interacting with the shaykh then I'm emailing, help me at Nur Muhammad and continuously having a, a, a line of communication with the, the shaykh's uh, entire sort of entities that they have uh, put together inshaAllah. Makes us feel that we're a part of it. We said before also you get the SMC because when you, when you wear something you feel that you're a part of them, right? So the people from abroad they're getting that all the time and you send pictures and they post it, oh I got the sweatshirt, I got the hat. 
Because the fellowship, like the fellowship of the rings, why is that so important? It's to feel that I'm with him and he knows me, I know him, he's my shaykh, I'm with him. And what he does I'm supporting him. So we're like then locked like a family and people feel that and especially when we're doing this on a virtual basis you want more than effort so that you don't feel like you're in your couch all alone and then you start to go in, into nefarious activities and, and, and go different direction. When you wear it you feel like you're a part of it, you put your cap on you feel like you're a part of it. Same way for the dhikr beads, right? So Mawlana Shaykh would say, don't you want to take this out in front of everybody and just, oh mashaAllah look I do, oh la 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 I do thousands and thousands. But always keep it in your pocket. When we keep it in our pocket then anywhere I go I remember, hey I'm Ahlul Dhikr. Why am I talking about these weird things with these people? Why am I going to try to argue with somebody? Mm. It's a reminder, go do your zikr, leave what these people are talking about. You have something mm. more important in the time Allah gave you, remember Allah So all of it serves a purpose. These are all the armory of someone who's trying to fight the devils. One is my fellowship and the love of Imam Ali, Allah Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Ali, that I'm with them and then my ring. This is Sunnah Prophet Ma'asa is the Sunnah Prophet So I'm with Prophet I carry his Sunnah and Prophet described that if you revive my way, see the symbolism of how it trickles down. If you revive my way Allah will grant you as if 70 martyrs your death. You'll grant the reward and the ajr of 70 martyrs. Because when people say such a beautiful ring say, yes it's Sunnah Prophet and when you go to mass, they know it. So the other hizb of people, oh this, oh, 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 this is the Sunnah Prophet be quiet. So this, when you revive this way, Prophet is teaching us the same, keep my way, I'm happy to see that you, you're, you're Muhammadiyun. Don't blend in with the shaitan and think, oh wow, oh, I'm scared, shaitan is going to har- harm me. No, be scared of Allah and actually the, the Sunnah Prophet will defend you and protect you from any type of harm that shaitan is planning, inshaAllah. <coughs> uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Alaykum as salaam With the power of the qalam, is it harmful to write my daily hasiba or to journal what I have done better? Yeah, journaling I don't… yeah, journaling you're, 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 you're manifesting things. Mm. Don't write the bad things you've done. Mm. That's not… Muhasaba is to take an accounting, not to rewrite, oh I did this harm, I, I stole this one, I stole <laughs> this one, I stole that one. You've doubled it and put it in, burned it into things. So even if the angels wanted to take it out of your hisab and sort of veil it by Allah's permission, you've written in it and made it very, very clear. Don't write journals like that. What we taught was to write haqqaiqs of the shaykh. When he's talking, write. Write the Muhammadan haqqaiqs that intercede for you and change who you are. Not that, uh, I, I stole this one, I stole that one, I did like this, I did like that. And no, 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 I didn't want to. We don't recommend journaling these types of things. And, and, the, and the, the, the inappropriate thoughts from your mind to journal them, we describe the danger of the pen in, in another association. You know, the, the, the inappropriate thoughts of your mind, you're learning to a'uzu billah and then make your tafakkur and contemplation. Then you see how much your mind is under battle and thinking and doing like everything, you'll understand the battle. Last thing you want to do is take the satanic whispers of your mind and put it to pen and paper. So what is the journaling about? You're not writing haqqaiqs and you're just, oh like this and the world like this and it's gloomy like this and the whole, ba- whole world can just go and I don't want to live anymore. No, these are all the wiswas coming through your fingers and hands and manifesting onto paper. Don't, don't write anything, don't draw things, don't draw inappropriate things. If you want, do calligraphy, draw salawats on Prophet beautific things that will come and dress you. So yeah. Write with this qalam haqqaiqs and realities, inshaAllah. As-salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as-salaam wa rahmatullah. 
Uh, sorry for the inappropriate question. You're welcome. <laughs> what is the reality of sinus infections? I used to have mm. endless blocked sinuses, but during meditation, always feel that it's become unblocked. Mm. There's all sorts of energies coming into your head, right? So uh, there's a, a jinn that attacks people into their head. It has one nostril, Kazaba, Kazaba, something like that, that is, is the name. But there's creatures that their job is to come and attack people. So they, when they are being attacked, often people may have bloody noses. So medical explain it something else, oh this is dry, this is like this, this is like this, you know. It's actually a defense on the system that when something inappropriate is trying to enter into your head to go into your being. The nose will bleed to flush it out. So there are things that are happening on, on people. That's why then the taweez is important, the, the meditation is important, make the connection. And from the connection when you're having a lot of energy onto the face is ask for their nazar, that please put your nazar upon my face and that your light dress my face against these difficulties. Because anywhere that they come and they focus there's going to be a problem. Right? They come onto an arm and the person begin to have a shoulder pain and they're trying to reside there. So again your zikr, your meditations, your connections and what you eat. So eat, eat with the du'as, eat from the shaykh, eat from uh, what will be a healing for you. Because everything else is going to be a, a difficulty, right? So they go into these uh, big stores that have alcohol and tobacco and they buy things, well okay there's a whole bunch of energy on those. And those were bought with intentions of what type of people, they're not being cleaned. Then you eat that and you take the energy and you share in the deed of that person. So Allah says that everyone shares in the deed of somebody. So when you support something good, you share in the good. When you support something bad, you actually share in their bad. So they take those monies and they go out and create a lot of harm, they, they kill a lot of people with all the things that they sell. These are merchants of death. They sell all of these contaminated things to harm people. So most of the things we eat are very toxic but you balance it. If you're away from that type of stuff then you go to the markets that have good stuff and, and, and clean stuff and whatever is affordable, you make your du'as if you don't have that. You put the taweezes in the house and, and render the names of the shaykh over all of the provisions so that we can combat the inner energies and the outer energies and all the difficulties that are coming. So just imagine, you know, it's, it's something very, very obvious, imagine how much difficulty these people are putting upon everything. And then you go into the actual food and it's all just, you know, corn syrup, all, all imitated, none of it is even real. That's how you know in the, you're in the Dajjal time. We said there are shows on Netflix, I think it was Food Inc. where they show a Walmart because this is the West we have abundant stores so it's mm -hmm. not the same in Pakistan. But if you go to a Walmart you see 10,000 Oreos, one type of cookie, literally 20 different versions, you know, 500 versions of cereal, uh, every type of ketchup, every type of food and they came back and said all these foods are actually just corn syrup and they mold it and color it to look like this and it's just people are consuming sugar, corn syrup. It's no real. If Fifty years ago what you got in the market of tomatoes and vegetables and, and, and natural goods, those were natural goods. Now everything is processed and made by factories and colored and put into a shape that is not really even that, that what you're eating because it's dajjal time. So more than ever the du'a and everything, the practices, spiritual practices so that Allah grant us to survive through these difficulties. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bis siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>